This is a big Tesla kit. Or, as it says in the small print here, a mini Tesla coil DIY electronic kit. I'm going to say that this is a big Tesla kit, and that's because on my YouTube channel I already have a video of a smaller Tesla coil. That video is just a quick demonstration, and I'd already assembled the coil before recording the video, so I thought it'd be fun to assemble a Tesla coil right here on the channel. So with that out of the way, let's look inside and see what you get. Okay, so it seems like we have a fair number of components, but this time no instruction sheet or instruction manual. That means we'll have to look carefully at the PCB to see if we can work out where everything goes. But what did we actually get in the kit? Well, of course we have the coil itself here, and that's put in a little plastic bag to protect the windings, so we'll leave that there for the time being. We have a couple of heat sinks and a couple of power transistors by the looks of it that will allow us to pulse the coil. We have a DC power jack, we have some fitting hardware here, which is used to stand the device up and screw the uh, transistors to the heat sinks. A couple of LEDs, a couple of capacitors, one electrolytic, one um, ceramic. We have a few resistors here, four resistors. Uh, we have an audio jack here as well, so we can put some audio into the coil and see if that changes the effect. We've got some wire, so that will be for the primary winding. And we have this additional component here, and this will be a neon bowl. And this will allow us to test the coil. So let's take a closer look at the PCB and see if we know what we need to do. So we can see there are two different transistors here, and they're marked differently. So we'll have to have a close look at those transistors to make sure we get them in the right way around. We have the space of the power jack, and it clearly says 15 to 24 volts. And I'm not really sure what we're going to do about that, because I don't really have a power supply that will go quite that high, so we might have to try it at a slightly lower power. I mentioned the red wire, that's going to be for the primary winding here, L1, and the coil itself will be the secondary winding. Space for the resistors and the LEDs and capacitors, and then we have the audio input as well. So fairly simple board, double-sided, we can look at the other side just here. Here. So I think the first thing I'm going to do as normal is go ahead and install the resistors. So let's turn on the soldering iron and get this up to temperature. So it looks like we've got two types of resistor and these ones will be 2k resistors and we can see there is a 200 and then a brown band for one additional zero for 2,000. So red is two, black is zero, and brown is one or one additional zero. So that's 2,000. Um, we have a brown tolerance band there as well. And on these ones, we seem to have brown for one, black, black for zero, zero, so 100, um, plus the red band for an additional two, zero, so that gives us uh, 10K. So that's 10K resistors. So let's pop those in the board and get ready to solder them in. Okay, those look okay. Let's go ahead and put the capacitor in, I think, next, uh, this little ceramic capacitor. Uh, so it says 105 on the board, and I can just about make out 105 on the capacitor itself. I don't know if that's going to come through on the camera or not. Then I think we could do our LEDs. So we have uh, two red LEDs here, and uh, as usual, the longest leg will be the positive, and the shortest leg will be the negative. And they're marked on the board here, positive to negative. And we just pop these in. Those look pretty good. Then what shall we do next? Well, I think this audio jack is actually quite flat as well. So I I'm, could put that in next, but I think it will make it harder to get this capacitor in. So I'll probably do the capacitor next. So again, um, the longest lead will be positive, although in this case, again, the can here is marked with a negative symbol for those, for that shorter leg. So you can see here, I'm holding it by the longest leg. And you can see the can is marked for the negative. And then we just need to match up the polarity on here, and we can see there's a very small plus sign here. So we need to put the positive in there and the shorter leg 
in the other side. And on the board it says it should be a one microfarad capacitor. You can just about see this is indeed a one microfarad capacitor. So again, let's pop it back in again. Long leg in the positive side, short leg negative side. And I think, as I say, we're going to do this little audio jack here. So that's all in. What I'm going to do next is I'm going to do this barrel jack here. We are going to need to pop in this piece of wire. That's going to be the primary winding on our coil. And of course, we need to put in the coil as well. But next, I'm going to put in the transistors here. And as it says, there are two different ones. And so we need to look carefully. And so this one is a TIP41C. And this one is a TIP41. So that will be that one at the top. And then at the bottom, it says we should have an IRF530. And if I look on here, this is an IRF 530N. So this one is the one for the bottom. So that's Q1. Now, what we need to do is we need to attach them to the heat sink. And so I think what we're going to do is pop them on first and then solder them in. Because if we solder them in and then try and pop the heat sink on, we might have them at the wrong height. All I need to do is grab a screwdriver that will fit this and install them. So I understand these might get a little warm, and so it probably wouldn't be a bad idea to pop a, a small amount of thermal compound behind these, but in this case I'm not going to bother, there's none provided with the kit, so we'll see how we get on without any thermal compound. I think the next thing to do might actually be to do the coil, because we need to wrap the primary winding this red wire around the outside of the coil. So I think it's important we put that in first, and it says two to three turns with the red wire. What we'll end up doing is we're going to need to remove the enamel here from this coil. So what I might need to do is just grab a sharp knife. Okay, so I've got a little craft knife here. So what I'm gonna do is just clean up the end of this wire a little bit. Okay, so hopefully I've scraped off enough enamel there, it looks like it to me. So what I'm going to do is gently and carefully solder this into this L2 terminal here. I'm going to want to glue this down, and I do have a mini glue gun here as well, so I need to plug this in. It doesn't have a power switch, so I've had it unplugged, but let's plug it in. Just... What we'll do is we'll end up gluing down that coil. In the meantime, though, what I'll do while that's warming up is I can add the little feet. Okay, and as you can probably see just up here, the glue is starting to drizzle out of my glue gun. And then what we can do is we can put a small amount of glue around the base of where the coil is going to go. I think that's good. So you can see I can now pick up that by the glue gun, by the coil. So let's unplug the glue gun and let it finish. Okay, so the last thing to do then is to put this uh, two to three turns of wire. And I just need to, of course, strip the ends. First one in here. Not too bad, reasonably tidy. Of course, we can add a little dab of glue as well if we like to later. So there we go. Now I've got a couple of different options here. I do have this little power adapter, and so it's a step up power adapter from USB and it outputs 12 volts on the barrel jack. Now as we saw, this actually says it should take 15 to 24. I don't really have anything that can provide quite that much power. So we're gonna try this one first and see if that does the job. But if not, I do have a backup plan. 
So I've got a power bank just here. So let's plug this in. There we go. And then we can plug this into here. And we've got one LED come on. Oh, and the other one is coming on as well. So let's wave a neon lamp nearby. And there you go, the Tesla coil is already working. So it is working with just 12 volts. So that's kind of neat. And I actually have a compact fluorescent bulb here as well. And sometimes, yep, you can get the compact fluorescence to light up, which is kind of fun as well. So there you go. So we're seeing some kind of fun effects just there. Now, one of the things we have on this board is this audio input, and I'm not sure exactly what this audio input is for. Um, so I've actually got a audio cable just here, and this is coming from my CD player. And what I'm gonna do now is start playing a CD, and we'll see if we get some interesting pattern. So I'm not seeing anything interesting happening here. No, it seems to be pulsing or, or similar. Now in the description, there was some suggestion that it would cause an arc uh, to occur, and that would be what would kind of pulse, but I don't actually see an arc from this, and that might just be that I'm running it at a too low power. So I said we have another option here, and what I can do is we can unplug from the USB power, and we can try it with that other option instead. Now on the board here, you can see there is an additional set of terminals, plus and minus, so I'm just gonna attach some wires, and we'll try one of my other power supplies that might just be able to provide just about 15 volts. Maybe that will give us just enough to get a little arc from the end of the coil. So in a previous video, you would have seen this power supply. And again, I need to pop the plug in for this. And so this is a power supply I assembled myself from a kit. Um, let's plug this in and see what we get. And then what we can do is we can try turning up the power here until we manage to get something. So we can see we're getting something at even like 10 volts, but what I can do is keep turning this up. And actually I'm actually only getting about 10 volts here, even on maximum. So this power supply really isn't doing a particularly good job. In fact, it's having trouble lighting up the bulb as well, this uh, CFL. So actually it turns out that USB supply is probably working better for this purpose. So let's switch back to USB then. But before I do that, let's just unplug this and you see when it's not under load, it claims to be able to provide about 15 volts, which I was hoping would be just enough, but under load it's really not managing to work. So as I say, switch back to USB. After playing with the equalizer settings on my stereo and cranking the audio to maximum, we can now see a very slight variation in the brightness of this tube here, and hopefully that's going to come across in the video. This LED on the left here also seems to be monitoring the audio signal, and the brightness seems to be synchronized with the sound. Now what's most interesting is I can just about make out the sound of this track through the circuit somehow, so as it's oscillating and processing the audio, it's also causing some kind of vibration that is um, audible to me. Now I'm sure that'll be too quiet for the video itself, but that means I can see the synchronization that's happening between the volume that's coming through the stereo and the effect it's having on the brightness of the tubes. And I do hope that's coming across for you. But nonetheless, I hope you found this video about the big Tesla coil kit interesting, and I hope to speak to you again soon in the next video.